Hey, everybody. Later this week, we have the privilege of interviewing acclaimed true crime writer Billy Jensen about his new book, Chase Darkness With Me. Head to Interrobang Books in Dallas, Texas on Thursday, August 22nd at 6 p.m. to check it out. And don't worry, if you can't make it to the event, we'll be releasing it as a special episode after the interview. This week, we're bringing you one from the Patreon archives. We hope you enjoy. Some people work their whole lives to achieve wealth and success, but for one woman, all it took was a European accent and multiple promises of future wire transfers. Suddenly, she found herself in the hottest hotels and at dinners with celebrities, but it all came crashing down once the bills were due. Criminal charges, jury deliberations, and fabulous courtroom ensembles. This month's mini-sode is Anna Delvey. Fills with dread, probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister I just feel like if I had an unlimited wealth and could invite any celebrity to dinner, it would not be Macaulay Culkin. (laughs) Who would it be? Oh. John Mayer? uh, Any celebrity. Any celebrity. Robert Downey Jr. Really? Oh, yeah. He's super A-list. He's more famous than John Mayer. I mean, he's A-list, but I've never heard you speak of him before. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Fun fact about me, obsessed with Robert Downey Jr. as a child. uh, Pre-sobriety. What did it? it? (sighs) There's a movie called Chances Are with Sybil Shepard. Yep. And Robert Downey Jr.'s in it, and I thought he was really cute in that, but really what made me fall in love with him, absolutely, is a movie called Heart and Souls, and Robert Downey Jr.'s a little boy with imaginary friends. He's born... Oh, that's not the movie I was thinking He's born the day that four people die in a bus crash. Yes, yes, I've seen that! And they are his guardian angels, but his family thinks that he's just weird and has imaginary friends, and he wishes them away, and then finally, whenever he's an adult, they come back, and he's a miserable adult, they come back in his life... And he can see them again. I was just thinking about this movie the so other day, but I couldn't remember the name of it. They get in a crash yes. because the guy is, is looking, looking at the window at this guy putting his hand up he's, his girlfriend's he's skirt try, in the trying to finger. <laughs> there we go in the car next. To Thirty him seconds into the episode, and gets in yeah, a car accident. He crashes the yeah. bus. Yep. And then Robert Downey Jr. and Elizabeth Shue fall in love. That's like yes. the, the promise. He's gorgeous oh, in that movie. I mean, he's hot as fuck. He's he's so still good looking. I just saw Avengers Endgame. <laughs> so hot in that he's, too. He has aged very nicely. He's just beautiful. And he's acting so good and he's he so He seems like a nice guy. I he mean, is. he did have some tough years, but who hasn't? Well, once he got sober, it's like well yeah. known. He is so nice. Mm-hmm. So if I had unlimited, if I faked my way to be a multimillionaire and could uh, swindle a celebrity to have dinner with me, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Interesting. What about okay. you? Well, I mean, I'm going to have to say my girl Beyonce. Oh, yeah. I She is one. I don't get starstruck very easily. Mm-hmm. If she walked in this room, well, right, first of all, if anybody walked in this room right now, I would pass out because the <laughs> somebody, somebody got in your house. Yeah. But if Beyonce walked in here right now, I might honestly faint. I think if any if we were anywhere and Beyonce walked anywhere near us, I feel like you'd hyperventilate. I I might. Yeah, I would definitely cry. I mean, I cry listening to her music. I've seen her twice in concert. Both Lived times. Up to the hype. Oh, they were great. I was just I didn't have the best seats. I didn't have the worst seats, but you know, in American Airlines Center, if you I feel like if you're not right up next to the stage, you're just watching something on a fucking TV screen. Oh, pretty much. Just That's like kind of how I feel about all any arena, all, all arena shows, or going to see a football game if you don't yeah. have good seats. Yeah, when, the one time I went to a Cowboys game, I, I was just watching the jumbotron the mm-hmm. entire time. I'd rather sit at home and watch. You know who a does Cowboy a good game. concert? Pink. She shoots yeah. out into the audience on like acrobatics. So it doesn't yeah. really matter where you sit. Well, and on Homecoming, on Beyonce's Homecoming, she is on a giant crane at one point that goes out over the audience as mm-hmm. well, so she can see the entire back row. Well, rows are all just standing around, but yeah, Beyonce definitely. I would have at one point said Johnny Depp, but I'm going to have to say no well, on that one now. You may have to cover that in a future. Apparently, the allegations were untrue, and Johnny Depp may be exonerated. Really? Yeah, there's new no well, new evidence. I've always heard it was kind of back and forth. Yeah. But 
you know, I mean, I'm not saying he's he's a free man, but like allegedly, okay, good. Well, new, I, new evidence has come to I light. I certainly hope so because I'm a huge Johnny Depp fan, and he's supposed to be one of the nicest celebrities mm-hmm. there around as well. Yeah, well, we have quite a dinner party to plan. It sounds like and we become as rich as Anna Delvey claimed to be. Okay, and it seems like we don't actually have to be. We can be as poor as we are now. That's true. We just have to act nicer. You just we have, have to, to act fancier, which may not be easy. We have to get some really nice slash ridiculously large glasses for our face. I just, I... Her glasses make me want to slap him off her face. <laughs> I, and not in, not in a aggressive, mean, abusive way. I just want to tell her to take them off. You look ridiculous. You look like an owl. Like an insane person. Yes. Well, I'm Christy. I'm Heather. And this month's mini for you fabulous patrons is about Anna Delvey. Heather is looking up how much these glasses cost right now. Yeah, she wears Celine glasses. Also, I'm so uh, not rich that I don't know if you pronounce it Celine or Selene. There's like an <laughs> I, accent over the E. I'm calling it Celine. I'm going to call but it. I also don't know. Selina? Like the. Yes. Selena. They're Selena glasses. Selena. What Selena Gomez wears. What Selena Quintanilla would have worn. Uh, no, they're $400 to $600 sunglasses. So those are. Yeah. And, and she also wore just glasses, glasses. I don't know Correct. if she actually also made needed them Celine. or they were just because she was a hipster doofus. <laughs> Wannabe hipster doofus. She is. But that's, yeah. But that kind of speaks to where we are. We don't even know how to pronounce these fashion <laughs> exactly. designers. There's a lot. I read them a lot. Uh-huh. Like, well, I know how to say like Bal- Balenciaga and stuff, but there's some that when I read it, I'm like, I don't even know. Well, I will say they said that she was wearing a dress that was an Alaya, and I only know that how to pronounce it and what that is because Cher is wearing that yes. in Clueless when he's like, lay on the ground, and she's like, it's, it's an, an Alaya. I know what a, it's just like a really nice dress. Yes. It's a totally famous I'm gonna, designer. I'm going to totally shoot you in the head if you don't get on. Oh, it's such a good movie. Yeah, so that's why I knew when they said she was wearing an Alaya. I was like, oh, That's I know. hilarious. Yeah, most of our knowledge comes from Pop fabulous culture. 90s films. Yeah, pop culture. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. If you're privileged enough to be among the rich and famous and living in Manhattan in 2017, chances are you were rubbing elbows with Anna Delvey. Known for her casually messy hair, cherub face and pouty lips, and signature black frame Celine glasses, Anna seemed to know everyone that was among Manhattan's elite. I just wish I was wealthy enough to have trash looking hair and no one judges me. That's the thing with celebrities and super wealthy people. You can look like a trash bag and somehow it's trendy you're like she's like, so fancy she's so rich she doesn't even have to care about what she looks she hasn't like. washed her hair in a week and my boss is like are you okay <laughs> but she doesn't they suddenly call it's you like, in like we're we've gotten some complaints <laughs> the grease factor is out of control <laughs> well anna was always dressed in the most expensive and fashionable designer clothes accessorizing with her signature celine glasses or sunglasses Even if dressed down, she would be donned in expensive athleisure wear, evoking the casual and confident air of a person with money. So you got to do a rich man once told me people only know as much as you show them. Whoa. If you roll around acting like a rich person. That's true. That's what they'll think. On February 28th, 2017, 25-year-old Nefatari Davis, known to her friends as Neff, was working as the concierge at 11 Howard, an upscale boutique hotel in the heart of Soho. When she first met Anna, Anna was checking into one of the hotel's mid-range rooms that ran $400 a night and was planning on staying for a month. According to Neff, this was unusual. Typically, only celebrities stayed for that long. But when Anna coolly tipped Neff a crisp $100 bill for recommending the best restaurants in town, Neff knew this was no ordinary guest. It's also goals is to be able to hand out hundos. Golly. I don't know. Yeah, I wish I could just hand out $100 bills. Would you, though? No. I would keep them for myself. <laughs> I'm stingy. <laughs> I mean, if you it don't... If you don't need it, you it. don't... Uh, exactly. You don't stay rich by giving all your money away. But yeah, I, I love. I'm a big fan of tipping when tipping is due and tipping well, but I'm also going to... Not just hand somebody a hundred dollar bill for telling me where to go eat, but also it's called Yelp, dummy. Again, it's because free. I don't do that, people aren't going to think I'm super wealthy. True, yes, yeah, true. This is a mark of wealth, I guess. Yes. 
Well, over the next few weeks, Anna would regularly stop by the front desk to seek Neff's advice and recommendations, each time thanking her with a $100 bill. Soon Neff realized Anna didn't need her help. She just wanted someone to talk to. It's very sad. Yeah. I mean, she's trying to buy a friend. As the weeks went on, Anna and Neff did become friends. They went shopping for designer clothes, ate at the finest restaurants, attended personal training sessions, and indulged in luxury spa treatments. Every time, Anna would foot the bill, almost always paying in cash. Anna quickly became known as one of the hotel's most generous guests, with employees literally fighting over who would get to take her bags to her room, because they knew a $100 bill would be in it for them. Yeah, if she had any kind of package or letter or anything and you brought it to her, she'd give you 100 bucks. Yeah. I would, and, and Neff said a lot of our research were from two articles, at the New York Magazine article that came out about this and the Vanity Fair. And in the New York Magazine one, Neff said not just play fighting. People would literally fight each other to, wow. get to try. I mean, if that's your livelihood. I would mail something to her so then I could deliver Ooh, it. <laughs> that's smart. Very smart. Because say you send a, you know, $20 gift, you walk up there, you get $100, $80 You got to make an $80 profit. Yeah. yeah. Well, Anna had been part of the New York social scene for a while and was well connected with the city's elite. No one was quite sure where she had come from. She said she was from Cologne, Germany. But strangely, her German wasn't very good. They said she spoke with a high-pitched European accent. That's very vague. I know. (laughs) The origin of her impressive wealth was also a mystery. Many that knew her chalked it up to her being a trust fund kid, a common occurrence in Manhattan, and didn't think much of it. Some were under the impression that her father was a rich and powerful Russian diplomat, while others were certain he was an oil tycoon. Anna told Neff her parents worked in solar energy and that when she turned 25, she would have access to her $10 million trust fund and could then fulfill her dream of opening an exclusive club focused on the arts, similar to Soho House, with locations in London, Hong Kong, and Dubai. She had big dreams. She had big dreams and big glasses. (laughs) So, hey, her, the only should, thing bigger than her dreams were, were her glasses. Say, we should all dream as big as her glasses. <laughs> Anna was already setting the wheels in motion to make her dream a reality and regularly hosted lavish dinners with the guest list, including CEOs, celebrities like Macaulay Culkin wah, wah. and numerous artists and athletes. Yeah, what, just, How did he find himself at that table? What, what do you think he's going to offer what you? What else do you think he's doing? Nothing. He's yeah. showing up to dinner. I like Neff Denying said she, what happened at Neverland Ranch, ooh, if you well, ask that's me. what Neff said. She said she sat next to him at dinner and she's trying to be really cool because she's rolling kind of above her pay grade yeah, yeah. at this point. And she said, I'm sitting next to Macaulay Culkin like, you went to Neverland Ranch. You're Michael Jackson's kid's godfather. Like, what is going on? Like, I want to ask <laughs> yeah. you so many questions. Yeah, but they have to be cool. You got to be cool. Yeah. One evening, Anna was introduced to Michael Huang, the young and wealthy founder of Beijing's M. Woods Museum. Never one to be shy, Anna boldly suggested they should go on a trip together to Venice. That's my opening line. Hey, you want to go to Venice? You know what? I think this is a great conversation. Let's go to Venice. You want to go to Venice? Let's go to Venice. Jet-setting to exotic locations was nothing new to Huang, but he did find it odd that Anna asked him to book the tickets on his credit card with the promise she would pay him back later. Shady. Huang also found it strange that while on the trip, she paid for everything in cash. Girl, you know, every, all, that's the one fatal a flaw mafia. of her plan. Trick. Yeah, that's why people are going to think you're a Russian mafia or something. Mm-hmm. Got to have that American But experience. also, who's going to... It might be odd... But you're also, I mean, who has just thousands of dollars in cash? So know. you assume, okay, yeah, this person's I mean, legit. they must be. Well, that was Anna's MO. Ask a friend to foot the bill for expenses ranging from expensive dinners to extravagant trips with the promise of paying them back later. The problem was the friends never saw their money again. He told Michael Wang said... Well, after we went on the trip, and it wasn't very much. It was only about $4,000. Yeah, okay. All right, fuck you. And <laughs> to then, be that rich. I mean, just be like, it was just four grand. It yeah. was fine. And he said, a couple months later, you know, she hadn't paid me back. And I thought, you know, she probably just forgot. Rich people do that all the time. I was like, racking up debts and forget about it is a very me thing to do. <laughs> yeah. But if somebody owed me $4,000. I would not forget I it. I would remember that. Oh, yes. no, no. If someone owes me money, I sure remember. If somebody owes me $5, it's all I think about when I see them. <laughs> 
So if you owe me money, don't think I don't know. She got a ledger. <laughs> I do. It's like Arya on Game of Thrones. I just have a list that I repeat like Ryan, to myself every night. When I'm on the top, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna keep the list of everyone that was mean to me, <laughs> and I'm gonna get yeah, it back. Exactly. In January. Anna hired a PR firm, like you do. Like one does. To throw her a birthday party for her at one of her favorite restaurants in Soho. In typical Anna fashion, she had invited Wang to this event, where clearly thousands of dollars had been spent, even though he had not seen a dime of what she owed him. I looked up this restaurant, and at the bottom it says we only accept credit cards mm-hmm. on their menu, and there's no prices. No, that's scary. That's how you know it's if a... If you sit down and there's no prices on the menu... My ass puckers. I, I and I also look across the table at Tommy and say, you want to you wanna go to Wendy's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want to get up? <laughs> we hit that fat wings. Like, yeah. what are we doing here? Like, oh. it is. It makes me nervous. I mean, because yeah, you don't. Because is a Caesar salad twelve dollars, no. twenty four dollars, or thirty six thirty six dollars? Yeah. And then even if you go to a restaurant and there are prices, but then you get down to the fillet or the lobster, market. and it just says market price, I go. Oh, God. I Do I want to be the person that asks the waiter mm-mm. what the market mm-mm, price mm-mm. is? You can't. You can't. You can't. No, you have to just, you got to order this. You either decide, I'm going to be a baller and just blindly order this. I'll or transfer you say, money from the I'll savings. I'll have the grilled chicken. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and you transfer money over from your savings when the bill comes. You pretty much. Well, for the most part, Wang wasn't concerned. About the 3000 <laughs> Yeah. But then a few days later, the restaurant called Wang to see if he had Anna's contact info. They had seen pictures of the two of them on Instagram from her birthday party and were trying to get a hold of her because she hadn't paid her bill. In an interview with New York Magazine, Wang said at that moment he realized, Oh my God, she's not legit. (laughs) Well, that's what it took you. Yeah. Anna began to meet with realtors creative directors and world-renowned chefs in order to get her arts club project off the ground her grandiose vision included a space that would inhabit multiple stories of famed art exhibits and pop-up shows three restaurants a juice bar a members only lounge a nightclub studio space and a german bakery that's very specific (laughs) you know that all the other stuff she was just thinking, oh, I got to have this because this is what rich people do. The German bakery, I think that was for her. She's like, I want a schnitzel. <laughs> yes, I love the schnitzels. I love schnitzels. Experts working with Anna informed her that a project of this magnitude was going to require capital upwards of $25 million. Yikes. Initially, Anna hit up private investors for the money, but quickly turned on the idea, claiming she was concerned they wouldn't take her seriously because of her age. Well, that's, she's not wrong. No. A friend of Anna's suggested she contact Joel Cohen, most famously known as the prosecutor for Jordan Belfort, a.k.a. the Wolf of Wall Street, who worked for the prestigious real estate law firm Gibson Dunn. Knowing this was a high-profile and wealthy client, Joel passed Anna along to one of the firm's partners, Andy Lance, whom Anna immediately liked and trusted. She said he didn't mansplain to her. He didn't, yes. This and is- he would answer her calls even when he was in Turks and Caicos for Christmas. And imagine just taking that vacation. Well, Gibson Dunn is a huge international law firm. And like that's why Joel Cohen works there. And it's very, very well-known and prestigious. This is a pretty embarrassing case that that guy, that at no point did he do sufficient diligence. Mm. Either Joel Cohen or Andy Lance did not do sufficient diligence to find out A, she didn't have any money, and B, she was like completely a criminal. Got a little egg on their face but with that one. But on the flip side, they got a glowing review from a happy client. She In, <laughs> in her jailhouse interview, she's like, Andy was the nicest guy. <laughs> well, she's like, Andy was the and nicest he's like, guy. please stop t- telling people <laughs> that we Andy work was together. Andy Cohen, he was very nice to me. <laughs> I need. A, I still haven't nailed down a Delvey accent. We're halfway through the. Episode. I honestly haven't heard her speak. No, I I've either. watched several videos and she's never talking because uh, she's in court. Strangely high pitched European accent. Yes, is what yes. I've heard. So I, I'll try I did my read best. It was strangely high pitched. Well, after Anna filled out paperwork confirming she had the money to pay the firm and wouldn't embarrass them, which is just her word. Yes, Andy put her in touch with City National Bank and Fortress Investment Group to secure the necessary loans for her project. In an email, Andy explained why Anna needed the loan. Her personal assets, which are quite substantial, are located outside the U.S., some of them in trust with UBS outside of the U.S. 
The money she received, he added, would be, quote, fully secured by a letter of credit from the Swiss bank. This is just a lot of posturing. Yep. You just can't trust your, I mean, I won't say you can't trust your clients. You can't trust anybody. <laughs> Don't trust anybody. <laughs> Doing their due diligence, a banker at City National asked to see the UBS statements. Which is a very low bar of due diligence to be like, can I just see the money that you said you had? Like, that's a really low level <laughs> Do request. Do you want me to just take some pictures and send you can of you this just... cash that I keep in my, One time, my closet? One time I was on an airplane and I was in the middle seat and the lady to my right on the aisle seat was looking at her bank account on her phone and I'm a nosy bitch so of course I looked over of course I did if your phone is exposed I will look at what you're doing on the screen don't be doing that because somebody's gonna snap a picture of that and then they've got your bank account info no joke she had her thing up but she had two hundred fifty thousand dollars over two hundred fifty thousand dollars in her bank account it was crazy that is I have never had I was that like, much bitch why are you a coach <laughs> Why are you Get back here first me? class where you belong <laughs> exactly you're back here drinking cranberry juice with my dumb ass be up there well. City National asked to see the UBS statements. However, instead of the statements, the banker received an email from an AOL address <laughs> of a list of figures from a man named Peter W. Hinecki. In the email, Hinecki wrote, Please use this for your projections now. I'll send the physical statements on Monday. How shady is this? <laughs> Please email me back at accountant1234 at AOL.com. You can also AOL instant message chat me. <laughs> Please do. Send I me an A message. I am very lonely. <laughs> well, confused, the banker replied to Hineki's email, asking if he was from the UBS. Instead of a reply from Hineki, Anna was the one to inform the banker that Peter Hinecki was the head of her family's office. So there's a thing that rich people do where they have family offices, and there's a really famous one in Dallas, and most of the famous Dallasites that you know have their money here. And a family office is a person, they literally pay your bills for you. They, the money so that goes they're in. kind of an accountant? Kind of, but they also have people who are specialists in like foundations and donations. So when you get hit up for an account, like for a donation, uh, you just say, oh, talk to my family office guy or whatever. Okay. Or if someone's like, hey, I'm going to open this new restaurant and I need your money, the rich person would say, oh, sure, call Bob Smith at ABC. So they're kind of an accountant, a lawyer, and an assistant all in one yes and, and they, they have, just have all they, they do like to take care of all that stuff all your you. bill and they do your investments they do pretty much every, they're like I your want someone like that they'd right. be very bored because i have no money to do anything <laughs> with <laughs> but it's, I, I would lose money having them it's true by paying yeah them they're not it. cheap but that would be like that's kind of cool though because then you know like you can see their credit card statements Ooh. i think we're learning on this episode i'm just nosy <laughs> <laughs> Well, in December, City National turned down Anna's loan request. Not surprising. Surprise, surprise. It was also becoming apparent that Anna was having cash flow issues. One night when her and Neff were at one of their usual $300 dinners, Anna's card was declined, forcing Neff to drain her own bank account to cover the bill. It's so awkward. Yeah, that's super awkward. And Neff said when the card got declined at first... The waiter came back and said, oh, I'm sorry, this has been declined. And Anna just took out a little notebook that had about 15 credit card numbers written down on it and just handed it to him and said, here, use one of these. And he took it and he went and proceeded to try and use every single one of them. Who would just accept a written down credit card number from somebody? Who did you steal those from? <laughs> exactly. And then what waiter is going to say, this sounds legal and legit. I'll just go try no, all of these. No, and no. then none of them worked. And instead of maybe calling the police to come investigate this, Jesus. the poor girl that makes, you know, probably a thousand dollars a month is having to transfer money over from her savings to her checking so she can just cover this dinner That's real quick. That's awful. Well, in April, Neff also began to notice that Anna's social circle had dwindled, primarily consisting now of Neff, the personal trainer Anna had hired who had since taken a motherly interest in her, and a photo editor for Vanity Fair, Rachel Williams, whom Anna had met at Happy Endings, a trendy nightclub in Manhattan, and had since befriended. When Neff asked Anna where all her friends had gone, Anna claimed they were all mad she had left purple the famously hip Paris fashion magazine where Anna had previously interned. She also probably owed them all a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. 
Happy endings, man. I mean, come on. Do we really want to name our club that? We're going to, this is called Jerk jerk Off Circle? (laughs) Yeah. It's the hottest nightclub in Manhattan. Oh, I bet it is. I bet there's also a lot of confusion. Wait, (laughs) I was promised a happy ending, and so far I'm having a terrible time. (laughs) Sir, please put your penis away. (laughs) It had also come to the attention of the manager of Eleven Howard that they didn't have a credit card on file for Anna. Whoops. What an oversight. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you do something with confidence, you can get away with so much. She's a con man. I tell my improv students all the time, good improv, 80% just being confident on stage. Just get up there and fake it till you make it. It's 100% true. Nobody knows if you're nervous except for you. In any situation. They only know as much as you show them. Exactly. Rich so man's if you... Creed. If you project an air of confidence, people are going to assume you're confident and then they trust you. That's all they know. If you get on stage and you are nervous and you look like you don't know what you're doing, everyone in the audience is also nervous for you. And then they've checked out. Or they in don't this trust case, you. they call the police. Exactly. Yes. Because Anna had booked the room for so long, the hotel had agreed to receive a wire transfer to cover her expenses. However, the money had still not arrived, and Anna now owed $30,000. $30,000. For, and $400 a night is not cheap, but that's not the most expensive room you could get. She was ordering a lot of room service. There's a James Beard award-winning restaurant on site, too, where she would just have the most expensive room service meals delivered to her. Well, and then she would have these the parties night. and charge them for a room. Exactly, at yeah. the At the restaurant, yeah. Delicately, Neff broached the subject with Anna, who assured Neff the wire transfer was on its way. Hours passed, and while no money arrived, a case of 1975 Dom Perignon did, sent from Anna to the hotel staff. The staff didn't bite at this transparent bribe and told Anna to either pay up or they would lock her out. A case? I wonder how many is a case? A case is usually six. Well, this is a bottle of Dom Perignon is like three hundred and fifty dollars okay. to five hundred dollars. Yeah, so it's gonna be several several thousand for wow. a case. Wow. Yeah. I wonder you, if it's well, good. So you can do it sometimes it's six, sometimes it's twelve. Oh yes, it's good. Have you had nineteen seventy five? I had, don't know if I've had nineteen seventy five, but I have had Dom Perignon and it is very good. Man. Yes. Their rose Dom Perignon is delicious. All right. Upscale. This fancy. was when I used to work for some wine. Oh, wait, no, I take that back. Nineteen seventy five oh that's in yeah, that's British money. Uh well, and that's less than the dollar. So if that was one thousand two hundred and eighty three, then that's gonna be probably double that for uh, I will US. say mathematically, it's a real fucking expensive <laughs> case of wine. So, uh, in conclusion, on another website, it's two thousand dollars. Who's to say? Yeah, it's it's a lot of money. Is the point? To everyone's surprise, the following day, a wire transfer from Citibank arrived for thirty grand. However, this only put a band aid on the problem. Eleven Howard still didn't have a credit card on file for Anna for expenses she was continuing to incur. And when they asked her about it, she would dodge the question. A few weeks later, when Anna went to Omaha, another Omaha shout out for a supposed business trip with billionaire Warren Buffett, the staff seized the opportunity to put her belongings in storage and change the key code to her room, effectively locking her out. And they said she was really upset. (laughs) Yes, she was. She's like, you can't just do that. The hotels can't. That's exactly what you can do. I'm surprised that it went this long. You're kind of lucky that they didn't do it earlier. When Anna returned to the hotel, she was furious and told the managers she was going to purchase web domains and all of their names, a trick she had learned from pharma bro Martin Screlly, whom she said she admired, she, who might be the biggest piece of shit on the face of the planet. Terrible. He is. She was friends with him. I know. He was at these dinners. Yeah. Neff said they were at one dinner and instead of Macaulay Colton, she's sitting next to Martin Screlly and he played the Jay-Z. Oh, yeah. Or, or it was Lil Wayne. Wasn't I don't remember it the Lil he Wayne? bought that like special. Was, I think it was Lil Wayne, the the one that no one had ever heard. He played it for them, and then she tweeted about it. And Anna got really mad that she had tweeted about it, and she's like, "I'm not deleting this tweet. I, I want everybody to know that I listened to this." Yeah, because oh, and he paid two million for the Wu Tang album. That's what it was. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he he said that he was in a jailhouse interview. <laughs> He said that he was sitting at this dinner and he thought he was really cool and famous and popular. And then he looked at her and she was just having people fawn over her Mm because she just had created this air of cool. Yeah. And I mean, anybody can Google a picture of her. 
and this isn't to be mean or anything, but usually super popular celebrities and wealthy people are pretty attractive. Yeah. She is not. She's sort she's of average. She's average. She's average, but she has that messiness about her that makes you think, oh, she's probably so wealthy that she's just does whatever she wants. Does whatever she wants. She's not, she doesn't care what she looks like. But she wasn't, she did not look like a model no. or a, an A list actress or anything. She just kind of looked like a normal person who dressed really nice. Yeah, she just wore everything she wore was expensive. Yes, yes. Now homeless and needing to leave the U.S. so her ESTA visa would reset, Anna saw this as the perfect opportunity to take a vacation with friends and set her sights on Marrakesh. She invited her personal trainer, Rachel Williams, and Neff, who was unable to go due to work. She told Neff, just quit your job, because Neff said, oh, I can't take and two weeks. And she considered it, yeah. honestly. And then I her mom's like, too. what's wrong with you? <laughs> and she's like, Mom, seven Gs a night, come on. I probably would have quit my job too no lie but then as it were probably wouldn't have been the best well worked out best decision according to williams who wrote a lengthy article for vanity fair about her experience with anna anna knew that williams couldn't afford the trip and nonchalantly offered to cover her flights hotel and expenses she would incur on the trip on May 13, 2017, the group arrived in Marrakesh and received a tour of the grounds of La... I'm going to call it La... Mo, what are we calling it? Oh, La, see. La Mo, Momunia. Mamo, I could not find yeah. anything that told me how to pronounce this. I did see lots of videos of it, though, and it is gorgeous. It, yeah, it looks like... A, I mean, it it's looks a like palace. straight out of the movies. Yeah, yeah it looks like an absolute Moroccan yeah. palace. It's a five-star luxury resort, ranked among the best in the world, and Anna had reserved a private three-bedroom villa for 7000 a night. Seven? That's thousand. crazy. That's so crazy. You know what I will say? If I was insanely wealthy, I would go and stay at Brando, which is in French Polynesia. Mm, and it, Owned by Marlon Brando? It's his family owns it, because Marlon Brando filmed Mutiny on the Bounty out oh, in French nice. Polynesia and fell in love with a woman, married her. Anyway, he bought this island out there, and they've since turned it into an eco-friendly, super luxury resort. Oh, that's amazing. It's something like $10,000 a night. I would Do it. I if you would, have the money, go do it. I mean, there's no way I would ever be that wealthy. That's and it's something so dreams decadent. are made of, and you're going to remember for the rest of your life. It's crazy. If I was infinitely wealthy, the number one thing I would do is travel. Oh, yeah, definitely. But this place, and they have an underwater generator. It's like, that's like Tony Stark. Like, they have an underwater generator <laughs> that generates the, the stuff on the island. They have unlimited, like, coconuts, pretty much. So a ton of stuff runs on coconut oil. So it's like a self-sufficient, eco-friendly island that's just, like, the height of luxury, too. Wow. Yeah, it looks it's amazing. like keto. I feel like I'm running on coconut oil right now. <laughs> well, according to Williams... Anna told her guests that the bill had already been taken care of. And for the next two days, they dined at the finest Moroccan restaurants, were treated to private tennis lessons, swam in their villa's private pool, and went shopping for local wares. It was during one of these shopping trips that Williams began to feel uneasy. Uh-oh. While attempting to pay for several caftans, Anna's debit card was declined. Williams asked Anna if she had informed her bank that she would be traveling out of the country. When Anna said no, Williams chalked the mishap up to typical bank security protection. Mm, but? Anna asked Williams if she wouldn't mind paying for her purchases, with, of course, the promise that she would pay her back in a few days when everything got straightened out with her bank. Williams obliged and also later paid for dinner at La Sultana. Uh-oh. It wasn't until the hotel staff at La Mamonia stopped Anna the next day to speak with her about payment the Williams began to realize there was a much bigger problem. When Williams asked Anna if everything was okay, Anna replied, Yes, I just need to call my bank. I'm trying to sound French. I think, I think you're, that's, I you mean, it's a, a, ambiguously European, which I think there you're you nailing. Go. The next day, Williams was walking through the lobby of the five-star resort when a staff member asked her if she had seen Anna. Later in the group returned from a day trip, the two men immediately approached Anna as soon as they entered the lobby. They forced her to call her bank and explained that someone had already lost their job over the situation. What? As Anna and her guests should never have been allowed to check in without a working credit card on file. That was my, when I first heard the story, I thought, how in the hell do they give you a room key without a credit she card? She must have been extremely persuasive. Yeah, she's a sweet conning. talker. Yes. I probably gave them a hundred bucks. Yeah, exactly. You, If you start tipping people, mm -hmm. they'll, you know, they'll, they'll break turn the, the other cheek. Sure. 
While Anna appeared to be making phone calls to the necessary people, the situation was not being resolved, and the issue rolled over to the next day, when more hotel staff arrived at Anna's private villa, determined to receive a form of payment. I mean, it starts to get scary when people start banging on your door. And you're out of the country? Mm -hmm. For sure. You don't know what the kind of laws they have there. Mm -hmm. They lock you up for this. By now, Anna wasn't even pretending to phone anyone for help. Instead, she and the staff had turned to Williams. They wanted her to provide a credit card. They assured her it would not be charged for anything. It was just needed for a block on the reservation's balance only and would not be charged for the final bill, which could be settled later. Later that day, Williams got an alert from American Express that her account had been flagged for irregular spending. When she asked the front desk why charges had been billed to her card, she was told that credits for the same totals would appear in her account. My question is, this $7,000 a night, I couldn't, I don't have a credit card that has that big of a limit. Well, I don't think it mattered what the limit was. They just wanted a card on file to basically, like when you check into anywhere and they're like, we just need this in case something happens. Incidentals. Her card did not have that kind of balance. She was just providing it. So basically they would stop hassling them and they could get on with. Make their trip. Yeah. Well, or going home as it were. Yeah. Williams, who had stayed in many hotels that would pre-charge her card for a certain amount in the event of any damages, but would later credit it back after the bill had been settled, assumed La Mamonia would do the same. Williams still believed Anna was good for the money, considering the exorbitant amounts she had seen her spend on multiple occasions. No longer in the vacationing mood, Williams checked out of the hotel the next day and set out on her flights back to the U.S., Along the way, she received a text from Anna, who had also checked out of the hotel and was now staying at Richard Branson's hotel in the foothills of Morocco. The text read, I'll wire you $70,000. That way everything is covered. Suddenly, Williams realized that Anna intended to leave all the charges from the hotel on her card and was planning on paying Anna back all at once for everything she owed her. The balance on Williams' credit card was more than she made in a year at Vanity Fair. That's what they charge her sixty two thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> My question is like, what credit card has a sixty two thousand dollar limit? Rich people. Damn. Robert Downey Juniors. Beyonce. Hell yeah, boo. <laughs> yeah, Beyonce doesn't need credit cards. I would just give her anything for free. So also the personal trainer that went on this trip with them, she very quickly got terrible food poisoning. Oh yeah. And was holed up in her room for two days and couldn't and then leave. Left, right? And then eventually said, I'm going back home. This is yeah. bullshit. So when she got back home, the uh, Rachel Williams is texting her, letting her know what's going on. And also Anna calls the trainer saying, they're telling me I'm going to be thrown in jail if I don't settle this bill. And she even, provi- the trainer even provided a credit card over the phone And for some reason, there was an issue with it. She even went the extra mile of calling one of her friends and getting her credit card number to give it to them. And the hotel said, "We this one also isn't going through. So at that time, they the hotel thought it was kind of on their end. Like maybe there was some sort of a processing. Yes. So because they tried three credit card or two credit cards because Anna never provided one that weren't going through. So it kind of gave them a little more time. But then they all decided to leave anyways because the jig was up at this I point. I love you. And if you were stranded somewhere and you called me and you needed money, I'd give it to you. Same. But if you called me and asked me <laughs> to give you my credit card for your friend. Hell no. First of all, you'd never do that because you're not a fucking idiot. No. Um, no. Like, what? That's it, wild. I, I, I To think- be fair, for this trainer, the shoes, Anna was a good client. She paid her Forty five hundred dollars for personal training. Yes, yes. If you if I pay you forty five hundred dollars for personal training, you're doing the crunches for me. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And she had taken a liking to her. She knew that she wasn't close to her family and didn't have family here. She was quite a bit older than Anna. So she kind of thought of her as a daughter. And your heart goes out to someone like that when they call you sobbing from another country saying I'm stuck. And even the hotel people got on the phone with the trainer and said we're going to call the police if she doesn't pay us. And like you said, you're in a foreign country. Your ass about to get thrown in jail. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. A week later, Williams had still not received the promised wire transfer from Anna and her excuse filled texts explaining why were becoming more vague and less frequent. Upon returning to New York, Anna had checked into the Beekman Hotel, not far from the World Trade Center, where Williams had an office. 
Williams continued to seek reimbursement from Anna and claims it became so stressful that she was unable to sleep and began to unravel in her daily life. She said American Express was calling her all the time and asking for payments. She couldn't pay them. And I'm sure it's very stressful. Oh, yeah. Just declare bankruptcy. I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> you just have to yell it. Yeah. It's, it's just, easy. <laughs> out in the middle. There's not even any paperwork. Middle of Times Square. A month after Williams returned from Marrakesh, Anna informed her she had a cashier's check for her. Skeptical, Williams decided to show up unannounced to the Beekman the next morning to catch Anna off guard and, with any luck, put this matter to rest. Gotcha, bitch. That's the way you get your money back. <laughs> Anna's room was a wreck with papers strewn about and clothes both spilling out of suitcases and piled on the floor. Not surprisingly, Anna couldn't find the check and said that she must have left it in the Tesla that she had driven back from upstate after returning to the U.S. All right, cool flex. No, we get it. <laughs> you humble brag. I wrote in a Tesla. Oh, I must have left it in the Tesla the that te- I drove back. She's like, you don't understand. The cockpit of the Tesla is so big. It's, my a, chick. it's a space car. I my- don't know space. <laughs> Even though my people were the first to travel to it, I do not understand. It is so vast and big. George Clooney and Sandra Bullock tried to explain it to us, but I just I don't know. It didn't make sense to me. Anyways, I don't know where your check is. <laughs> My space car, goddamn. God Anna called the Tesla dealership and even her lawyer, but of course no one had the check because there wasn't. Andy Light's like, bitch. What are you talking like, about? Um, we don't hold I checks don't for people. Know what you're talking about? Determined to not only get her money. But to prove a point, Williams pulled a bat out and beat the shit out of her. And that's what she should have done. <laughs> Mesquite justice. Well, she didn't. But she did refuse to leave. And for the rest of the day, followed Anna to business meetings and dinner where Anna ordered oysters and white wine. Williams didn't leave until after 11 p.m. with the promise to be back at 8 a.m. the next morning. I just want to imagine Anna slurping an oyster, making eye contact with Rachel Williams. Like, <laughs> Rachel said she sat there on her phone sending work emails pretty much ignoring Anna except every now and then saying what's the update do you have you did any word on the check just to like let her know like I haven't forgotten about this and I'm not they were basically just kind of coexisting there and at the end when she said I'm leaving I'm going to be back at 8 a.m. the next morning Anna says well I hope you at least had fun today (laughs) She's like, bitch, no, I didn't have fun. Where's my $62,000? I'm walking around like a loan shark trying to get my money back. (laughs) Williams arrived at 8 a.m. the next morning with plans to accompany Anna to the bank. But Anna was nowhere to be found. Livid and with no one to turn to, Williams took it upon herself to start investigating Anna. Why are we just now starting this process? I do a criminal background check on almost everyone I (laughs) meet. Do you have Google I bet you do. And also, in this case, she didn't have a criminal record, but there's some evidence of something somewhere. And there was this Anna Delvey everywhere. Like, that was a well-known persona that she created from this Paris magazine. But go, I don't know, go back and get some details. If you Google Anna Delvey Russian diplomat parents, nothing's yeah. going to come or up. There. You t- All these things that she's told you. Or you type in Delvey, Russian diplomat Delvey, or like solar panel Delvey, something like Nothing that. Nothing is going to come up because it didn't exist. Yeah. Williams learned from a mutual friend of her and Anna's that Anna had once owed him a large sum of money. And the only way he was able to receive payment was by threatening to go to the authorities because Anna was terrified of being deported. God. <laughs> Anna had told him her father was a Russian billionaire working in the oil trade. Williams immediately found this suspicious, as Anna had told her that her parents worked in solar energy. Williams attempted to contact Anna's parents, but couldn't find any any information for them. Well, if we'd all Googled this about a year ago, saved everybody a little trouble. trouble. On August 1st, Williams went to the police, who suggested she try civil court or launching a GoFundMe. Okay. (laughs) That's not the solution for our country's they, problems. They were not very sympathetic to her. Like, well, in sounds- fact, saying, "Man, I wish I'd gotten to go to Marrakesh." <laughs> She's like, uh, "That's what a, that's what an NYPD police officer yeah. sounds like." Both of us were like, yeah. "Damn, it sounds bad." <laughs> this that's, gonna be like, "That's what everybody sounds like yeah. to me." <laughs> Any uh, a dude of authority is like, "Well, <laughs> well, stop speeding." That's mm-hmm. what that's what they sound like. Speaking to someone at the civil court also proved to be a dead end. It was just then the Williams' cell phone rang. 
It was the personal trainer. Anna was in the lobby of her apartment, just as she had been the week before, asking if she could crash on her couch for the night. Williams and the personal trainer decided to confront Anna together, and soon they were all seated at a nearby outdoor patio. The thing with the trainer is really freaky because the week before, the trainer had been on a date, and the guy was at the house, and Anna's like, I have, I have got nowhere She just go. calls from the lobby downstairs. She calls from the lobby. That's so awkward. Yes. And, the well, the front desk called up to the trainer's apartment and said, uh, we got this girl down here. She She's won't crazy. leave. She's, and she kept saying... Tell her that I'm not here. And the trainer needed to, and this, I think this was on a separate occasion. She showed up several times and the trainer said, tell her I'm not here, but then call me back when she leaves, she leaves so I can leave. And she stayed for hours. Yeah. And they kept calling her saying, she's still here. She's just texting on her phone. And the trainer said she needed to leave and she couldn't. She, she was, was a, just prisoner. a prisoner in her own home. God. But, Anna had also, by this point, been kicked out of the Beekman Hotel for not pay- paying her bill. So she and had nowhere to go. And she went to, to the go. W and she got kicked out. The W is wiser. They kicked her out after like two days. The Beekman kicked her out, I want to say after like two or three weeks. Again, yeah. she's a, she. they need to have... Apparently you can stay at a hotel for quite some time These before you're asked to leave. New York hotels need to have a wanted poster situation. Right? If you pass a bad check in a deli, your name's going to go up <laughs> right? on the wall. Like there's not a picture of someone who's told 30 G's of... That's why it's um. wild. Well, she had nowhere to go, so she's hitting up the trainer. She even had the audacity to contact Rachel Williams and say, "You can sleep in a can dumpster. I can I come over? Can I stay at your place?" And she said no. And then Williams said she felt guilty and she called her back because Anna had said, "I don't want to be alone right now." And she was worried she was going to do something. You need to go the wide drastic. <laughs> so she let her come over and she said that they watched. Bridget Jones' diary and had some wine. <laughs> but then she wouldn't let her stay. And and she didn't even have any of her stuff because it had all been locked up at this hotel. Yeah. And the trainer had been nice enough to give her a dress. And that's what she wore for basically two weeks, just Ooh. crashing on people's couches and just wearing the same thing because she oh, didn't yes. have anything. Her panties were dirty oh, as fuck. Oh, God. Everything. That messy ass hair. The trainer asked Anna to be truthful with them, but Anna maintained that she had always been telling the truth, and it was all her bank's fault that she was in this mess. It quickly became apparent to Williams that she wasn't going to get the answers or payment she was looking for, and it was then that she decided to contact the district attorney's office. Articles had started to come out about Anna and her strange behavior, calling her a, quote, wannabe socialite. Williams sent these to the DA, telling him that she believed Anna was a con artist. Williams' suspicions were confirmed when the DA informed her Anna was the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation. They had had a couple of she'd had a couple of brief run ins with the cops not being arrested, though, but where they've come out where she was trying to walk the tab at restaurants. Yeah. So it wasn't the first time that they had dine. Such yes. a shitty thing to oh, do. Oh, it's awful. Have you ever done it? Hell no. I did it once in college, and I still have guilt about it. What restaurant was it? It was Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> it was with a big group of people, and we were such assholes for doing it. And one of the guys dove into the back of the pickup truck that one of his friends was driving when we were getting away and fucked up his back for, like, the rest of the semester. So, I mean, um, Carmen was a bitch to that guy. My sister was a server uh, at 16, and so I would have been, like, 12. And that was the first time, like, the concept was introduced to me. Yeah. And the thought of someone doing that to Shannon oh, just wrecked me. I still have guilt about yeah. that. If I could go back and find that waitress, I would pay her back tenfold. It's a shitty thing to do. Yeah. On October 3rd, 2017, Anna Delvey legally known as Anna Sorokin, was arrested in Los Angeles on six felony charges and one misdemeanor charge. She was accused of falsifying documents from international banks that showed she had 60 million euros in her account. In late 2016, she then took these documents to City National Bank in an attempt to secure a $22 million loan to ostensibly fund her arts club. City National Bank denied the loan. Undeterred, Anna took the same documents to Fortress Investment Group, who agreed to consider the loan if Anna could provide $100,000 to cover legal and due diligence expenses. On January 12, 2017, while overseas in Germany, Anna effectively secured a loan from City National Bank, the bank that originally denied her, by convincing a bank employee to let her overdraft her account, promising to wire funds to cover the overdraft. 
She then took the $100,000 to Fortress. I have overdrafted my account by like $4, and they charge you $35. And they they start calling your ass about it. Who did she convince to let them overdraft $100,000? That's insanity. I don't get it. In February, Anna decided to withdraw herself from further consideration for the loan after Fortress attempted to verify her assets to complete it. The guy at Fortress was like, where is your... Where is your family office at? And she said, it's in Switzerland. And he said, okay, I'll fly there. I'll meet him in person. And she said, you know what? Never mind. I'll withdraw. <laughs> you know what? It's okay. You don't I'm have to do that. I'm sorry about it. Yeah, Peter Hineke must Peter. be busy. Peter's very busy on his AOL chat. Peter Hineke, who did not exist. Mm-mm. None of these people existed. Mm-mm. Fortress had already spent 45000 of the 100000 And Anna kept the remaining 55000 it was with this money that she had been paying for her extravagant lifestyle. Explains all the dollars, all the cash. Yep. Between April 7th to April 11th, Anna allegedly deposited $160,000 in bad checks into her Citibank account and then transferred 70000 from the account before the checks bounced. She's just doing a classic check scheme. It's just, and it's uh, paying, what is that expression? Farm from Peter PayPal. Yeah. Also, how fucking stressful. It stresses me out to just think about transferring a little bit of money Mm -hmm. around. To have this whole web of lies you're having to constantly... I think about that. When she was alone by herself, and she knows what she's doing. Oh, yeah. Are you stressed out? Are you so delusional that you are just convincing yourself that somehow it's all going to work out nobody's going to figure it out i wonder about that a lot with cases yeah any case like when you're alone and you're answering to yourself what are you really what does she thinking? think before she shuts her eyes at night exactly. and i bet you though she was just into this instagram lifestyle and into being seen seeing and being seen and being tagged and being people liking her picture and being jealous that she's staying at Richard Branson's hotel yeah. in Morocco, that it's worth it. She interned at Purple Magazine, which is very... Legitimate. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's very famous and elite. She started meeting tons of celebrities and models and famous people. And I think she just really got a taste for that mm-hmm. lifestyle she's addicted. and decided, you know what? I want this. Now. not. I don't want to wait for it. Exactly. Anna was charged with multiple counts of grand larceny, attempted grand larceny, and theft of services. The larceny charges covered her loan from Citibank, which she never paid back, as well as her unpaid stays at the luxury hotels and for leaving Rachel Williams with the bill for their Moroccan vacation. The attempted larceny charges were for her attempt to obtain the $22 million and another $30 million loan from City National Bank and Fortress Investments. She was charged with theft of services after tricking a luxury private jet service into giving her a $35,000 private jet ride to Omaha for the Berkshire Hathaway Investor Conference with billionaire Warren Buffett. That was nuts. How the fuck are you going to convince somebody to give you a $35,000 jet ride? She told the guy, she's like, hey, I need you to charter this jet for me. I have this wire. I sent your boss a wire. And the pilot looked at this wire confirmation that she had created, I guess, on Photoshop. And he said, OK, hop in. Let's go. Please. And she said, here, I, I wired $40,000 already. And can we go? And he flew him out to Berkshire. And then they said she had gotten a friend to give her a pass to get in. So the Berkshire Hathaway conference is famous because one share of Berkshire Hathaway is usually trades something like $160,000 a share. And then they have baby Berkshire, which is Berkshire B, which is like a miniature kind of version of that. That's like $150 a share. So you can get into this conference if you own even the smaller shares of Berkshire Mm -hmm. and Warren Buffett comes out and there's usually a celebrity guest speaker and they talk about what they think the economy is going to do for the year and blah, blah, blah. But it's a celebrity kind of place, too, with the VIP it's area. It's a star-studded event. Well, where on the VIP area where Warren Buffett is. Well, she wasn't a VIP, but they said the guy that she went with said that they were just having dinner, and they looked across, and it was the VIP area behind this glass wall. And Anna just said, come on, let's go. Yeah, and Bill Gates was in there. And she just walked in there. Yeah. And started mixing I'm telling you, if you, if you've got the balls, you can do a lot of stuff. I, I crashed a wedding at the Ritz-Carlton. Nice. And you just go up and you're like, how's it going? Man, this was a great wedding. Wasn't it beautiful? The food was very good. It was an open <laughs> Did bar. Did you sit? Oh, no. Nah, it was after the wedding. It was a reception. Yeah, I got a plate of food and I sat down. <laughs> and no one questioned it? <laughs> no. I was dressed was really... It a, was it a big wedding? 
Yes. Okay. It was huge under you these Because you can tents. do it if it's a couple hundred people. Oh, it was more. It a must, small intimate wedding is going to be a little trickier. No, it was easily 300 people. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you can blend we in. We came off of a yacht sunset cruise thing and I was dressed pretty nice and my friend Jody and I nice <laughs> were with two other people and I said let's go let's go crash that wedding and the two people we were with were like no we can't we're gonna get in trouble I was like alright babies stay over here I'm gonna <laughs> go eat lobster I'm gonna go check out that shrimp cocktail and I said we're not harm I mean the it's all you can eat yeah. If we eat some shrimp, it's not going to cost these people any more money. If they ask us to leave, we'll leave. That's what I said. And we went in, and what you can't you can't overstay your welcome. Right. Just you go in, in you get make out. a couple of jokes in the buffet line, you have yourself a plate of food, go get a couple of drinks, and then you... Then you jet. Thanks. Yep. It was great. Nice. Man, it was fun. Wish it was the, a thrill. Did you wish too. the couple... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you get I, that ballsy? I got a photo with them? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you gave a toast? Yes, I did. <laughs> On December 18th, 2018, Anna appeared in New York City criminal court. Rather than accept a plea deal that would have released her from jail and deported back to Germany, Anna chose to go to trial, which began on March 20th, 2019. Spoiler alert. This was a terrible choice. <laughs> There's a lot That's of That's also how confident she was that she w- could somehow talk her way There's out of this. There's a lot of paperwork and evidence. She should have take the, taken the deal. Maybe she just really hated Germany. She was terrified yeah, of being deported back. It's I. I mean, well, I've uh, been there. It depends on who you ask. I've I think, been but to Munich, it's gorgeous. Yeah, and I think where she lived was great. Maybe I don't, she lived in a she, small town. She near wasn't Cologne. close with her family. She told Rachel Williams, and who knows how true it was, that she felt like her relationship with her parents was more of a business deal than based mm. in love. So I don't know if she was super close to them. I don't even know how true that is, but also. If I have a choice of going to trial or just going back to where I'm from, I'm probably going to choose the latter. If you have a choice between jail and freedom anywhere, choose the freedom. <laughs> she always choose freedom. Choose the freedom. I would rather be in jail in America than in free anywhere else. It's like, no. No, Germany's <laughs> no. really nice. You don't get yeah. it. It's beautiful. Just never be in jail. They have this beer called Radler. It's very good. <laughs> it's like a lemon beer. They've got great pretzels and sausage. <sighs> During the three-week trial in Manhattan Supreme Court... Anna declined to take the stand on her behalf, and her attorney, Todd Spodek, declined to offer a case for the defense. However, Spodek did hire a celebrity stylist to cultivate Anna's courtroom looks, which garnered so much attention, an entire Instagram account, at Anna Delvey Court Looks, was created, which attracted 4,000 followers. I'm glad Spodek's got his priorities straight. (laughs) The prosecution called more than two dozen witnesses to provide damning testimony against Anna including Rachel Williams, and alleged that Anna told countless lies and forged financial records and bank statements to maintain the lavish lifestyle she couldn't afford. The month-long trial ended after the jurors deliberated for two days. The jurors repeatedly asked for clarification on the law, and in one note to the judge, indicated they had reached a stalemate due to a single uncompromising juror. In another note, jurors said they were, quote, unable to reach a unanimous verdict because we fundamentally disagree. Then, less than two hours later, the jurors reached a verdict. Have you ever seen a judge get a note like that? Their answers almost always, why don't you go back in there and try? <laughs> try to figure it out. It's like it's a like, parent <laughs> when your kids come, Billy won't let me watch TV. Well, you're going to figure this out amongst yourselves because I'm not getting involved. I was thinking when I was a kid and say, I don't have to poop. Mom said, you need to go in there and try. You need to go try. And always you know what? Try. She was right. There's it always a, came there's out. There's a Daniel Tiger episode. Always go. Always try to go. <laughs> Anna was found guilty of attempted grand larceny, three grand larceny counts, and a misdemeanor charge of theft of services. She was also acquitted of one of the most serious charges, one count of first-degree attempted grand larceny, attempting to steal more than $1 million from City National Bank, as well as one count of second-degree grand grand larceny. Their big concern was that charge, the uh, first-degree attempted grand larceny. First degree was longer jail sentence possibility mm. because the amount of money that she was trying to but she was not found she was guilty acquitted from it because new york's law on attempt has to be that you became you came dangerously close to doing something and since she got bounced in the diligence process they said well she no. kind of tried but yeah. it doesn't rise to the level of first degree attempt gotcha anna is expected to be sentenced on may 9th and faces between five and 15 years in prison on the most serious charge Regardless of the outcome, ICE has stated that Anna will be deported back to Germany as she has overstayed her visa, which might be her 
the worst outcome for her. Also, and you were just in court for no reason. You yeah. could have just gone back to Germany. Also, she's in prison right now. She's at Rikers Island. And it, which is very legit. It's tough. And in a jailhouse interview, she said, oh, it's not that bad here. I the don't know why of... everybody thinks it's that bad. It's actually not that bad. She said the murderers are very interesting. Yeah, she's she's fascinated by them. She's She said she didn't realize one woman's in there for stealing people's identities. And she said, I didn't realize how easy it was. So that's probably her next venture Gosh. when she gets out of jail. She's learned nothing. No. So who really was Anna Delvey or is Anna Delvey? Well, Anna's real name is Anna Sorokin. She was born in Russia in 1991 to working class parents and in 2007, at the age of 16, moved to Germany with her parents and younger brother, where she attended high school in Eschweiler, a small working class German town near Cologne and the German-Belgian border. Anna's dad worked as a trucker and was moved up to an executive before being laid off. While he now works for a heating and cooling company specializing in energy efficient systems, he does not work in solar energy, as Anna claimed. And he's not a uh, billionaire of any kind. No, he's not an oil titan. He's not not a diplomat. He's not a billionaire. He is just a normal man. And and her parents have said, we do not have a trust fund. They didn't know any of this was Mm -mm. going on even until the trial started. And they said, please don't publish our names because nobody in our village knows about this. They live in a very small village. It would be horrifying and very embarrassing if people found out about it. But yeah, he's a blue collar working class guy, which Mm -hmm. is respectable. He's not a tycoon, a titan, uh, anything. No, just a normal man like most of us. In 2011, Anna graduated from high school and moved to London. She started college, but quickly dropped out and moved to Berlin, where she applied for and obtained a sought-after internship at esteemed fashion magazine Purple in Paris. So that part was true. Correct. She did intern in Purple. In 2016, Anna moved to New York City, where she meticulously began to weave her web of lies. And then it all went down. Well, Anna's story not only captivated millions around the globe, but Hollywood has also taken an interest. In June, Netflix announced that Shonda Rhimes will be developing a series for the streaming service based on Anna's life. Lena Dunham. God damn it. <laughs> we have a lot of hot takes about Lena. Not a fan about of Lena, Lena Dunham. Well, she's also bought the rights to the Vanity Fair articles from Rachel Williams for $300,000 and will be developing a series for HBO. Rachel Williams has also landed a $300,000 book deal with Simon & Schuster for an adaptation of her story. So she she did okay. She was weeping on the stand the other day. (laughs) She did okay. And I thought, you know what? You're laying it on a little thick. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was stressful to go through that. You're about to make... Close to a million bucks for this As story. As a person who owes well over $62,000 <laughs> right now, this exact moment they're sitting here, you sort of learn to just live with it. <laughs> and if all of a sudden you came into a million dollars for going through something, you know, upsetting, inconvenient, but I wouldn't venture to say it's Here's the thing. just life changing. I'm uh, that's sorry. Life changing. I'm sorry that you had to go to Morocco <laughs> and yeah. stay in a villa with a butler. And then pay for it. Yeah. That sounds tough. These are. I'm so sad. As for you. I was reading all this, I texted Heather. My God, this is the definition of problems. rich people problems. I have yes. I maybe I'm a huge bitch. I do not have sympathy for these people. No, no. I hope she goes to jail. Yeah, she should. Got, I mean, people yeah, have she should probably be in jail, but fired for what she did. Yeah, they lost their jobs. And people and lost sucks. their jobs and stuff. But this Rachel Williams girl, not a super sympathetic figure. No, no. I mean, it's probably why Lena Dunham bought the rights to her bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not even gonna lie. I hate on both of them because they have book deals and I don't. <laughs> that's why I'm hating. That's not. That's not why I hate them. <laughs> that's definitely not why I hate Lena Dunham. Well, so what do we think? I think we just summed it up. This yeah, is rich people problems. It sounds like. This Anna woman has just figured out how she to capitalize out a game in the system. Capitalize on people's trust, mm-hmm. and luckily for Fortress City National and City National Bank, they had sufficient due diligence properties in, in involved. But I guarantee you, she didn't pay Gimson Dunn. Yeah, I guarantee you, she and City C I T I City Bank that she took the hundred thousand dollar overdraft mm-hmm. from that. Somebody needs to slap the shit out of that employee. Probably maybe lost their job, too. Yeah, what is yeah. going on? So it's one of those where they're trying to be nice. And if someone says, I've got $60 million, and don't you want some of it? You cannot look past shady behavior. Yeah. 
Yep. Let the dollar signs get Don't in the way. Don't be distracted by an accent. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, that's uh, this month's mini-sode. It's a, it's a fun crime in the media. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any suggestions of kind of we, the Patreon mini-sodes so far have been sort of internet story was the yeah. last one. Kind it could of be anything, lore, really. legend. This was a crime that we were both interested in reading the story about. So I was going to post in the Patreon Facebook page. Whatever you guys want us to talk about, you know, if we'll look into it and do a mini sode on it, because you are the ones we're doing this for. Correct. This is for you. And speaking of doing stuff for you, we ho- are very glad that you gave us so many questions to answer on our live Facebook so Q&A. Much fun. It was a blast. We had so much fun doing it. We cannot wait to do the one in May. If you missed out on it, you can go back to the Facebook page. We archive the video, so yep. it's still up and available. And we'll start a new thread with another uh, round of questions. Tommy was at the grocery store. He had just left the grocery store when he was listening to it. And he said... Oh, I should have got you all that stuff for that sandwich. <laughs> what a good husband. He also, I, we didn't I'm see I'm looking his, for my own Tommy Hopefully Brown. we didn't. Oh, man. Good luck. There's only one. <laughs> hopefully we didn't miss anybody else's comments on the live stream because he had commented and I went back and read him and we were talking about what cryptid we want. He had said, whatever it is, I'll end up taking care of it, <laughs> <laughs> which is very true. <laughs> well, we apologize to Tommy Brown, our first supporter and producer of the show, for not saying your comment. But if you and also for a couple of the questions on there, we didn't have great answers for. It was uh, someone asked about a uh, murder in Indiana and we'll look into that and we can talk about on the oh, next yeah, Q&A. Yeah, for sure. So, Maybe we do a mini soda about it. Hey, good idea. Well, we want to say thank you so much for supporting our Patreon. We really appreciate it. You guys really help us out. You have no idea how helpful it is for as much time and effort we put into the show. It just makes us feel so great that you want to take the time and especially your hard-earned dollars and uh, support us. So seriously, we really appreciate it. And we look forward to meeting you guys at live shows in the future, hopefully. Absolutely. And the best thing, in addition to Patreon, that you can do to help us grow is like, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. And tell a friend who you think would like us to check us out. It means so much to us and really helps small podcasts like us get more exposure. Yeah, and if you're like me, you just talk about the show at a brunch. I had four. I made four people subscribe nice. yesterday. Nice, do it. And I mentioned it on that date today. Oh. Uh, also, you can follow us on Instagram at Twitter at Sinisterhood Pod and like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. You can follow me on Instagram at Heather vs. The World and Twitter at MCK vs. The World. Christy, where are you? I am on Twitter at Christy or GTFO and on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Sinisterhood.